Hi, today we're going to start introduce a new shape and a very interesting shape called circles. So we've been dealing with polygons of various short sorts, triangles, squares, rectangles, regular polygons, but they all had one defining factor. They had more than one side. Circles, on the other hand, have one side or infinitely many sides. Where does that infinite come from? Well, think about this. So this is a circle, right? Or at least my rough approximation of one. All right, but if you think about it, we could split each little segment of this circle into infinitely small pieces, right? Just like we can turn a rectangle, we can turn a rectangle, split it into more segments by making it a hexagon, and then splitting Setting this hexagon into more pieces by making an octagon, we can do the same thing for a circle and basically make it sort of like a regular polygon with infinitely many side lengths. Now, we're gonna, not going to use this because, well, infinity is way too big for us to do math with, but the principle still holds that circles are weird in geometry. They don't fit into the established patterns. And one of the easiest, way, easiest ways we can say this is through area. So the area of a circle is pi r squared. And that's just funky. Right? Because not only do we not have like a side length in here, we're in all the other formulas for triangles and squares and rectangles, we did. But we also have this funny looking symbol over here, pi. We usually write it as pi. So what is this talking about? Well, it's basically saying the area of a circle, or what's inside it, is equal to the radius of a circle squared times this ratio, which we, which we call pi. And pi is an infinitely long number. It's 3.14159265 on into infinity. It never ends. Another special thing about circles. But what's this radius actually mean? Well, number one, it's not a side length. It's the distance between a center of a, of a circle and one of the circle's outer edges. So this is a radius. This is a radius. This is a radius. Now what's a diameter? Well, a diameter is basically thinking about it as cutting a circle in half, right? This whole thing from here to here is a diameter. And if you look at it, you'll say, oh, so a di diameter is a radius, one half from the center to a side, plus another radius from the center to the other side. And so I usually say, yeah, the di diameter is two times the radius. So what, if I, what, about, what, if, what if I want to find the perimeter? Well, we don't use the word perimeter when we're talking about circles because they don't really have a number of sides we can easily define. We call this the circumference. I, I like thinking about it just by thinking about that word. It's a circle. So we're dealing with a circumference. And our circumference is the length of this you know, circle around the circle, the length, the length of its one or infinitely many sides. And the circumference is equal to the diameter times pi. Or if you want to use when if you want to put it in terms of, ra of radius, 2r times pi. Right? So area, kind of obvious, what, what's inside the circle? Circumference, the length of that external side. All right, so those are our basic formulas, right? So if you're solving a problem, they say, find the area of the circle where the radius is three. We're gonna say, well, since the radius is three, you know, pi r squared. So in my case, that's pi three squared. So that's nine pi. And usually, if you don't have a calculator, that's how you'd leave it. Because remember, pi goes on for infinity. So we can't really have a final exact answer. What if they say use the calculator to, I don't know, three decimal points? Well, I do the math and I just do dot blank, blank, blank for my, for my three decimal points. Now, there was another fun thing about circles that's pretty important to what we've been learning about with angles. And that is what we call arcs. 
So what are arcs? Well, they're essentially angles in circles. I'll show you what I mean. Say this is our center, right? This is our center, and I draw two radi ra radius, radiuses, which we call radii. Radii, it's actually the plural form for radius. I draw two radii like this. These are points A and B. Now we, we, we say here that arc AB, which we represent through this little notion, this kind of like semicircle semi notion, so that it's an arc on a circle. This area in here, between the, cir the circle, that is the center of the circle, A and B, is what we call an arc. And we can do a ton of things with arcs, as we're going to learn later. But for right now, I'm only going to focus on arc measure. Essentially, what's this angle here? And now we see we can apply much of what we learn about angles when solving for arc problems. I'll give you an example. Say I have a circle like this, right? Here's my center. I have a diameter through it. Say this is B, this is D. I'm going to say this is A. And this over here, well, that's C. And I want to know what the measure of the arc DBC is. So first of all, what on earth is, is arc DBC? Well, we start here. We'll go here. We're at B. We go here. We stop. We're at C. So basically, once, once we know from here all the way through here, what is that measure? Now, clearly, that's most of the circle. So unlike in most of our angle problems, we're going to have a number that's way bigger than 180 degrees. And we can solve this problem in part by knowing that the area of a circle is 360 degrees. Oh, sorry, the measurement of a circle is 360 degrees. And that it's pretty intuitive when you look at it, right? Imagine I have, an, I have a, a circle like this. Right? I'm going to do it at the bottom here. I draw my diameter right through, cut it in half. Well, those are two 180-degree angles, 180-degree angles. So the measure of this entire circle is 180 plus 2, or 360. Right, but right, right off the bat, let's find DBC. Now, it sure would be helpful if they gave us all the angle measurements between DBC, but they only give us one. They say this is 19 degrees. So. What do we do? What can we do? Well, let's look very carefully here. Wouldn't you agree that these two angles are vertical angles? And these two angles, they're vertical angles. So they're equal to one another. So just how this is 19, this is also 19. But why is that relevant? Well, DBC is the entire circle except this 19 degree portion. So we can say this is equal to the entire circle, our 360 degrees, minus that 19 degree portion. So that means our answer is 341 degrees. That is our final answer. So the measure of arc DBC is 341 degrees. So with examples like that, where we're given one single angle on a circle, and we use exactly what we know about angles already, right? Vertical angles, right? Supplementary angles, complementary angles. We use all those properties, except now we're, we happen to be in a circle. We happen to be using that kind of arc notation. But really, it's the same thing. So when you see an arc measurement problem, don't get freaked out. You already know exactly what to do. Now, in the next videos, we're going to be talking about things that are exclusive for circles, different properties of arcs that make circles special and very mathematically interesting. But that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you have a great day.